A new global platform is aiming to revamp cancer care. Driver was developed by Harvard-trained oncologists and will attempt to pair patients with specifically tailored treatments from anywhere in the world. CEO and co-founder Will Polkinghorne told our Chief North Asia correspondent Stephen Engel the startup launched in China, where the number of cancer patients is exploding. Well, we didn't pick the timing. Uh, 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 we've been in China for over three years. Uh, uh, since Horizons Ventures, uh, Mr. Li Keqing led our Series A investment, uh, we've endeavored to build our platform as a global one. In a nutshell, how does it work and what need is it filling? The problem that Driver solves is the following. We have a market failure right now in terms of how patients gain access to treatments. There's never been more treatments. 50 years ago, there were very few treatments. So the doctor did a pretty good job of interfacing with the cancer patient and getting them the right treatment. There's a lot of information out there. There's, but how do you get the right treatment? There's tons of information. And, and, and so today, the only way a patient can get access to that treatment is through a physician. And the data is, is that that physician is failing often to give the patient standard of care. So what that textbook answer is that a patient should get anywhere and getting that patient access to the most advanced therapies in the form of clinical trials. So what Driver does is it says, look, instead of the doctor being by himself or herself responsible for clearing that market, what if we had a platform to help? We're not a new treatment per se. Driver is a middleman. We're an operating system between the patient and the doctor. Uh, but what we're hopefully curing uh, is the treatment system itself. So as the cure for cancer treatment, hopefully we can speed up uh, the development and the delivery of many more cures. But is that marketplace, that ecosystem that is there between the doctor and the patient and what's out there, is that marketplace broken? Broken. It's completely broken. And I think the data that it's broken comes from societies like the United States, where post-Obamacare, more than 9 out of 10 cancer patients have their care paid for. So, so as a society, at least in the United States, we've solved for that. Whether it's the government paying for it, your employer paying for it, yourself paying for it, some insurance paying for it, nine, more than 9 out of 10, probably 95% of patients have it cared for. But too many patients don't get the standard of care. The overall statistic is hard to define. Uh, the numbers differ disease by disease, but there are some cancers where more than 60, 70 percent of patients will not get guideline-based state-of-the-art standard of care. So I would say that's a market failure, meaning that the treatment exists, but the consumer's not getting it, and they have the ability to pay for it. Right. And the second market failure is how patients get access to clinical trials. And the number of Americans that get access to clinical trials is less than 3 percent. Yep. The number of Americans who would like to have access to clinical trials is more than 80 percent. How does this fill the need as well? to kind of bridge the gap that we've seen. Uh, we, we talk a lot about pilot shortages in the airline industry, shortages of this and this and this, but there are oncologist shortages the, in the world, huge. Massive. There's a massive, massive, massive shortage of oncologists. So two, two really bad things are happening at the same time. One is there's not enough oncologists, uh, uh, and two, there's more and more cancer patients. So over the last decade, the number of cancer patients across the world rose by approximately 30%. Uh, the majority of that increase driven by patients in Africa and Asia. Uh, and so you take the fact that there aren't enough oncologists. In eight countries in Africa, there are zero oncologists. Uh, there's a, a, a tenth of the number of oncologists in China compared to the United States. I think the stat is 18 oncologists per one million people. One million China. people, and that number is about 10 times that in the U.S. And in the U.S., we think we might have a 20 to 30 percent deficiency. Mm. So if we're not comfortable taking a part of the oncologist's job and migrating it to a technology platform, it means that you're, comf you're comfortable with a lot of people around the world not having an oncologist at all. The way we're going to solve that is by bringing some of an oncologist's job today and migrating it to a technology platform. So you decided you are a technology company. We are a technology. You're not a healthcare company. And we're not even a health tech company. And, 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 and I'm not sure why in healthcare and medicine if you're a tech company, you need a adjective in front of you. Health tech, digital uh, 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 health. I like to say that drivers know more of a healthcare company than, say, Uber is a transportation company or Airbnb is a hospitality company. We're a tech company. But how much did this impact how you decided to seek funding? Because you didn't necessarily want to be beholden to Big Pharma or to the insurance companies, I assume. Is that correct? Yeah, you're exactly right. So, uh, uh, ex exactly. Uh, many people, when we were were getting started said, well, why didn't you start off with going to pharma? And we didn't start off going to pharma because while we wanted 
and while we're really excited, and, and we've begun lots of conversations with Farm about how we can work with them, we wanted Driver uh, to be a platform for the patient. And we wanted to build alignment with those two key stakeholders who are in that room when a patient goes on a treatment. And that's just two people. It's the patient and the doctor. And we wanted to build our platform with the patient being our primary customer, uh, with alignment with our partner centers, uh, and then now that we've done that, we're really excited to bring pharma in, but in highly patient-aligned ways that can augment their options. Driver CEO and co-founder Will Polkington speaking to our Chief North Asia correspondent Stephen Engel in Hong Kong. And that does it for this edition of Bloomberg Technology. Tomorrow we are heading...